everyone. Today we are at the Santa Monica Pier and in this video I'm going to show you some of the top attractions and things that you have to see if you're here. And stay tuned to the end because I'm also going to share a few tips. The Santa Monica Pier is located in Santa Monica, a coastal city west of downtown Los Angeles. The pier is one of the most famous attractions in Santa Monica and if you're visiting the Los Angeles area it's a great attraction to add to your visit. The pier was originally opened in 1909. Over the years, it has been reconstructed a few times due to damage from weather and the sea. Today, the pier is a hotspot for tourists and locals and has many activities to keep you entertained. So, let's jump into 19 things to see and do if you're visiting the Santa Monica Pier and surrounding area. The first thing is to spend the day at the beach. The beachfront here is beautiful and massive at 3.5 miles long offering plenty of space to set up for the day of swimming, surfing, or just relaxing with a good book. There is plenty of parking for the beach at the pier and in nearby parking lots. It's in a great location as well to walk to the pier and there are plenty of shops, hotels, and restaurants nearby if you want to make a full day of it. Another thing that you can do if you're here is come to Pacific Park. They have a number of different rides for you to choose from and it would be perfect for kids. Pacific Park is a very popular attraction for photos and videos because of the large Ferris wheel and roller coaster. But if you actually want to visit the park, there are 12 different rides available, plus lots of midway games and food you'd typically find at a carnival or fair. For kids seven and under, you can get an unlimited ride wristband for $20 each, but eight and older, including adults, is $40 for an unlimited ride pass. However, you can purchase single ride tickets if you only want to do one ride, and these range in price from $5 to $10 per person per ride. So if you're going to spend a lot of time there and do a lot of rides, the unlimited pass is definitely a better value. And be sure to check out Pacific Park in the evening when it's all lit up. Number three is to dine out. The pier offers a variety of restaurants like Bubba Gum Shrimp Company, along with some fast food style dining, and the Albright Restaurant and Bar. Number four is to watch the performers. There were lots of performers on the pier when we visited, like this breakdancing group, some musical performers, and even a magician. Number five on my list is to get a souvenir from a vendor. You can pose for a caricature or get customized art with your names on it. And there are tons of knickknacks and trinkets to buy as souvenirs of your visit. Number six is to visit the end of historic Route 66. Route 66 was established in the 1920s to connect Chicago, Illinois to Los Angeles County, California, ending in Santa Monica. It covers over 2,400 miles and on the pier, you'll find the end of the route sign to take a photo with. There's also a small shop selling memorabilia and offers some information about Route 66. Number seven is the Playland Arcade. This is a great attraction if you are traveling with kids or adults who enjoy arcade games. They have a variety to choose from, and like a true arcade, you can also cash in your tickets for prizes at the end. Number 8 is to watch the people fishing along the pier. Or if you have a sport fishing license, you could go fishing yourself. 
This is a popular spot for fishing and you will see people setting up their gear all along the pier. Here we saw a man with four rods on the go. Unfortunately, we didn't see anyone catch anything on our visit. Another thing to do at the Santa Monica Pier is come to the Gila Bay Aquarium. Unfortunately, it is closed for a private party today, but we came here about five years ago on our first trip to LA. This would be a cool spot to check out if you have kids. We spent about an hour here on our first visit back in 2017, and inside they had lots of activities for kids and interesting facts about the fish they had in their aquariums. Number 10 on my list is to catch a sunset. The sun sets at the end of the pier, offering beautiful views, perfect for catching some great photos as well. Plus, there is plenty of bench seating along the pier, so you can just relax and enjoy. And not all of the action is on the pier. You can also stop for food and some entertainment on the boardwalk. Let's go. <laughs> Number 11 is to explore the Santa Monica Boardwalk. This area has some restaurants and bars, fast food stands, and there are also sometimes performers in the area as well. We actually caught a Burger King promotion that was being filmed. You just never know what you will see. Number 12 is to rent a bike. There are a few rental shops on the pier and the boardwalk to choose from. You can rent your own or they have some bike tours that you can participate in depending on your preference. Cycling in this area is a very popular activity as you will see later in this video. Number 13 is to check out the original Muscle Beach. This outdoor gym area dates back to the early 1930s, attracting athletes and gymnasts from afar and helped Santa Monica become known as the place to be for stunt people, actors, and bodybuilders. The 14th thing on my list is to check out the Marvin Road Bike Trail, also known as the Strand. This beach trail offers 22 miles of paved trail for riders and takes you past some of the best beach areas in California. It starts in Torrance Beach and heads north to the Will Rogers State Beach. But if you wanna just stick around this area, you can rent a bike on the pier or boardwalk and explore this area by bike. If you're walking the area, there's also a designating walking area separate from the bike lanes. Another thing to do in Santa Monica is to come and walk the boardwalk area overlooking the Santa Monica Pier. Plus, there's plenty of shopping, restaurants, and other attractions nearby to keep you interested. To get to the boardwalk area in Santa Monica, there are a few different bridges and walking paths you can use over the highway. There are also some great views of the beach, pier, and water below, but stay on the path because there is a lot of erosion on the cliff here. Number 16 is to browse Santa Monica Boulevard. Once you've taken a walk along the boardwalk, you can easily venture down Santa Monica Boulevard to check out some of the restaurants, shops, and some of the famous hotels in the area. Number 17 is the Third Street Promenade. This is a pedestrian shopping area with even more restaurants, cafes, and retail stores. They also have seating areas and a few pretty fountains if you wanna sit and enjoy the area in the shade, like my husband did while I went shopping in a few of the stores. Number 18 is more shopping this time at Santa Monica Place, which is an outdoor shopping mall with some higher-end stores like Peloton, Nordstrom's, and Louis Vuitton, to name a few. 
There is also a food court here with indoor and outdoor seating and public restrooms. This was a cool shopping experience for us Canadians as all of our malls are closed in from the elements where we live. And number 19 is to visit the Santa Monica Farmer's Market. This market is open on Saturdays and offers a variety of farm fresh produce, meats, cheese, homemade goods, and flowers. If you're staying at our vacation rental and have access to a kitchen, this would be a great spot to pick up some fresh groceries. And now for a few tips if you're coming to the Santa Monica Pier. The first is parking. There is plenty of parking in the area, but as always, get here early if you wanna get a good spot. It's $7 to park for the entire day, but there are shorter stays available. Another thing to note is that the boardwalk is very uneven and there's a lot of tripping hazards, so watch your step. Both Alan and I tripped a few times while we were there. There is a thick plastic runway along the main walking area of the pier though, so if you have a stroller, wagon, or mobility device, I'd suggest sticking to that runway. And if you want to get a beautiful sunset shot, time your visit accordingly because the sun sets right at the end of the pier. Another good thing to note is that there are public restrooms available at the pier. You can find restrooms at the end of the pier as shown here, and there are some at the other end of the pier as well. And the last tip is that the pier is a non-smoking attraction. There are signs posted all around that smoking is not permitted on the pier. Be sure to stay tuned for some more Los Angeles area videos coming up to cover all of the attractions and activities we got up to while we were there. I hope this video can be helpful for you if you're planning a visit to the Santa Monica Pier in the future. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more international travels coming soon.